Hello everyone and welcome to the review of the JJRC X7 quadcopter. This is a newer model and it's also a smarter model. Uh, this is to compete with the MJX series as it has a full HD camera, it has uh, a long flight time, it has even a gimbal camera but it's not gimbal stabilization, it has an electronic uh, adjuster of the tilt for the camera but it's a good thing, it's a uh, a uh, step beyond, uh, for example, the MJX uh, doesn't uh, tilt the camera on some models. They do have some tiltable cameras now, but uh, it's a step forward. Uh, this can be uh, bought in white or black. And besides those info, you get another uh, interesting stuff, such as flight uh, path planning. You can uh, design your own uh, flying points and using the app, uh, provided for this drone, it will follow that. Uh, it also has a plug-in battery included. It's a snap battery which can be replaced easily, but it's not a smart LiPo. It does have a um, shape that it will not permit using another battery. And beside that, it also has uh, different smart modes such as point of interest and automatic return to home. And there's some other info here, um, like maximum altitude and stuff like that. Uh, to use it, it's very important, you need to have a mobile phone that has a 5G wireless connectivity. Um, there are some phones that do have 5G, but they do not work. Uh, this is a bit troublesome with some uh, quadcopters, but most of the newer models will work with this quadcopter. So let's take it out of the box and see what it is inside. So, on top of the box, we are greeted with the user manual, uh, which is uh, rather simple. It does have a lot of instructions and uh, pictures, and even shows how to use a bit of the app, and what the keys on the remote controller are doing. So, it's good to have it, and it looks to be in a kind of decent English, it's understandable, because some of the Chinese companies that uh, uh, include an English manual with their drones usually write it in a terrible English or something like that, and it's impossible to read or understand. So the manual it's uh, decent, so let's see what you get in the box. It looks like a phone holder, a very weird looking balance charger, look at that plug. So it has some LEDs there, maybe we are going to give it a test to see how it works and look at that, DC 4.35 volts, so this is a high voltage LiPo battery, this will provide it with a longer flight time and they advertise this for an incredible 23 minutes endurance, so that should be plenty of flight time out of this quadcopter, a micro USB cable a bag with a hex key uh, and a small wrench and nuts, nuts for the propellers, are you crazy? And the controller, wow, and they did improve things, this is a controller with no more AA or AAA batteries, looks like a rechargeable uh, controller and that is very nice because uh, this will have a longer usage and you can recharge it and there is the micro USB port and I also like the foldable antennas, they are a nice addition, um, stores space and uh, it will avoid getting them damaged when you transport this thing, really nice. And of course the quadcopter, oh, and there's something else inside. So this is the quadcopter and look at the camera and the camera is mounted on a very soft uh, damper insulation so that should be nice, it should provide some jello killing which is a very nice improvement and this thing is rather heavy but also very stiff, well built so uh, not looking at the fingerprints that are going to be left on this very glossy surface. It looks really good. It 
kind of feels like a good quality plastic although being a hard type of plastic probably in a crash it will not bend it will break so hopefully we don't crash it and there's the micro usb port uh, it's not provided you need to use your micro sd card so the camera will record on it and also has a micro usb port here probably this is for downloading the files from the micro sd card without taking it off and maybe you can also update the firmware which should be a really nice extra and of course the battery which comes with a protection tab here so i'm going to remove it and they did go a bit the usual stuff with this connector so they want you to buy their own batteries well, that's good and that's also bad and it clicks in and there you go we have a almost ready to fly quadcopter and what else we get in the box propellers of course and we get some spare propellers as well which is a good thing but i don't like the fact that we only get the exact four nuts and probably are going to lose one of those and it will not be fine funny to find a replacement so you need to take a lot of care about them and the propellers are interesting because um, they are very thin and very light uh, they are not like usual plastic propellers you get from uh, cheap quadcopters uh, they kind of feel like a good propeller and they even went by uh, forward by adding the exact type of propeller and the size and the pitch are there which is interesting you don't see this every day but I don't like the fact that they are not self tightening or self locking or stuff like that they are having a square here on the motor and you need to rotate it until it fits there and there you are going to secure it with the hat of course it is safe but it's not convenient imagine going out to fly and you need to take the range and uh, in the grassland you need to uh, tighten up the nut so that's the only con until now so let's go on further let's do a quick test of uh, the charger also so i'm going to plug this in like that and i'm going to use a power bank and it's starting and look at that it has leds that blink and shows the status of each cell in the battery this is a two cell battery the capacity is uh, somewhere over here it's uh, 2500 milliamps hour high voltage lipo so that's why the quadcopter is rather heavy it's a large two cell battery and this gives it some added weight and the charger it's pretty cool hopefully it will charge properly each cell especially that it has a monitor for each cell inside all right so that's enough with it let's install the battery inside the quadcopter and i'm going to power it on the power button is on the battery so okay this is kind of a smart battery after all so you are going to press it for about two seconds how nice it sings uh, that's not a very nice song so this thing it's kind of awkward fitting it here because you need to unfold the antennas first if you want to install the mobile phone support so you need to take this on or off before each flight and yes of course it's going to lock into position very well so this will be a bit fiddly to use it each time at least they went the extra and let that hole there so you don't need to take this off each time but you are not going to be able to fold the antennas back together with it so kind of a 50 50 situation right and i'm going to power on the transmitter if it has enough battery and two steady green lights probably this has has uh, a connection now with the quadcopter and it's now time to use the app 
the official app is called enjoy fly and on my mobile phone and maybe on some other mobile phones it's very important after you connect to the wireless of the drone which is drone and something like that you actually need to disable mobile data because having it enabled the app will try to connect to the quad quadcopter using the mobile data and will fail to do that it will not connect or if it connects and disconnects in flight it's going to try to reconnect using the mobile data connection which will fail and you are going to lose control or image or something like that so that's not a very good thing because if you want to use the internal map of the app as you are going to see you don't have a way to cache it so you need to somehow cache it before flight and then disable mobile data use only the wireless so the drone will connect to the phone without issues and without disconnecting so I'm going to tap the app and I'm going to start flying and no SD card environmental magnetic field interference is too large that's of course totally normal as I'm indoor near a lot of technic stuff and no SD card yes because I haven't installed one yet so drone is under remote controller it tells me that it's binded with this so i will not be able to control it from uh, the mobile phone you can control it apparently with the mobile phone with virtual joysticks but this will give you probably better range and of course it will give you a lot more uh, control and now it's kind of an fpv and camera control mode so let's see the app so gps is in preparation and this is position it has several uh, modes so i'm going to zoom in this should be better so we have altitude mode this will not keep the gps positioning it will only keep the drone level this is for more advanced uh, users we have the position hold when you have gps signal the drone will hold this position we have track this will follow you and will use either the controller if it has a gps antenna built in or your mobile phone gps and orbit mode it will circle you and it will film you around and around and around so we know how orbit usually works and what else we have here we have the uh, gps signal strength which is known because i'm indoor and we have the quadcopter battery voltage level which is 60 percent there's no sd card we have the recording and picture button and it will work because it will save uh, if you don't have a card inserted into the quadcopter it will save a local file on your mobile phone as it streams the video on it so you can see i'm actually recording now and if i go to the gallery button i have the pictures and videos which i have taken with this i don't know why i have a camera here but it does work without a micro sd card of course the quality will be worse and we have these more settings here and we have general settings beginner mode which will limit the height and the distance we have left hand and right hand for the virtual joysticks if you don't use the controller voltage level it shows the exact voltage it's at 7.7 .7 volts which is 60% uh, currently we have a low power alarm which is adjustable for 10% is kind of default right now very nice you have that and what else we have here sensor calibration we have compass and gyro calibration very good because both are very important for GPS uh, quadcopters and you can pair the RC if you want you can change the wireless uh, name of the drone and we have firmware version which you can click on view uh, and there you go we have image version repeater version RC version we do get some information drone version so probably this quadcopter will support firmware updates which should be a huge extra because it will leave room for improvements such as camera quality flight quality and stability and things like that uh, this is the issue i was telling you about not having working maps because you cannot use it without having a mobile data connection because there's no map actually so 
if I'm going to enable mobile data I'm going to try to cache something but now probably the drone camera well it still works for now but if it's going to disconnect and reconnect it's not going to reconnect anymore because that happens to most of the quadcopters I have ever used by using that so no waypoint route planning aircraft GPS mode mission all right uh, probably you also need a GPS lock on mobile phone and quadcopter to actually be able to download something you can even select here normal or satellite mode so probably I'm somewhere in China or things like that and I need to test this outdoor of course I'm also going to quickly show you the controller in uh, more detail so you have this uh, slide wheel here this controls the gimbal and it works very nice the gimbal is extremely smooth so you can control it very slowly or uh, faster so this is the fastest speed but you can go also slower but you need very fine uh, fingers but it's nice it's not jerky, it doesn't have any kind of gear noise or things like that so that will not mess the recording if you try to use some kind of a cinematic uh, type of uh, lowering the camera while passing over something you can do that with this slider and it's very well positioned here you have this button here which changes the flight modes so for instance I'm uh, flying on GPS and uh, I want to go into at altitude mode I can keep this button pressed and look here where it says position and now it's in altitude mode and it's ready to go and I can press it again and it's in preparation in position hold because it does not have GPS signal you also have this button here for controlling the camera short press take picture long press take video recording automatic take off and landing and automatic return to home in case you are lazy press the button it comes back so that's with the controller i'm now going to fully charge the quadcopter battery and the controller and i'm going to go outside for the flight test